Hi, I'm Phil Dooley from EFTA. I'm here at JET and I wanted to show you the bike from our Fusion Expo. But that's on tour around Europe, so we've borrowed one from CCFE. And here it is. And it comes with a free uh, engineer, power supply engineer, Rob Salmon. Hello, Phil. Hi, Rob. So uh, tell me about this bit of kit. OK, well, essentially, it's just a normal bike, um, except the wheels have been taken off. And the back one has been replaced with an alternator from a car. And uh, so what that does is when you're pedaling, it converts your pedaling power into electricity. And then that electricity is recorded and your output power is measured on the front there. Give us a demonstration then. OK. Right. OK, so nice and easy. All right, so we've got a couple of hundred watts here. Yeah, OK, not bad. So how much power is that? Well, would it not power my house? No, it wouldn't. No, I'm afraid not. No, it's not very much power at all, really, in today's yeah. standards. So uh, that would pay, maybe do about four or five light bulbs in your house, or the modern type. Uh, maybe you know, keep a, a laptop going. Right. But, but what about if I want a cup of tea or something? No, you'll need a lot more power than that for kettles. So yeah. kettles are about two thousand watts, three thousand watts. And so, yeah, you you'll take a long time to get any water boiling. Well, this can you give it, you know, a bit more? few more herbs. Okay, I'll give it a try. Alright, All right, come on, come on, I'm thirsty. Five hundred, six hundred, come on. Alright, alright. It's not gonna happen, is it? <laughs> no. I need, I need a few more cyclists if I'm gonna get a cup of tea. Yeah, well I'm certainly boiling, but... And clearly cycling is not the way for us to supply our modern world, is it? No. Power? No, that we no, it's not. So this is why we're looking here at Jet. We're looking into an alternative source of energy. So we're working on fusion power. So mm -hmm. um, we're doing a lot of experiments to see if we can get electricity out of that. Right. But uh, hold on, your power supply, not power uh, harvesting, in your job. Why do we need power supply then? Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Well, um, essentially, we we need to, a lot of energy in order to create the conditions for fusion in the first place. So we need to have really high temperatures and keep it really well confined. And so um, that's what my job is, is to make sure the power gets there in the first place. Right, OK. Could you show us around and show us how the system works? Yeah, certainly, yeah. OK. So where are we here? Oh, right. So now we're at the very back of site. And uh, this is where we're connected to the national grid. Right. So up there, we're actually connected to the 400 kV super grid. So this is like, we're one of the few demands on the grid that's actually at that high voltage. And this is the national grid substation, which then feeds our large transformers, um, which is what powers all of site. So right. we can go and take a look if you want. Yeah, great. So what's this? Okay, so this is our, uh, one, one of our super grid transformers. So it transforms down from 400 kV to 36, and, uh, and then we use the 36 as our, our distribution network, and then that goes and powers all our other supplies. So 36 kilovolts is what supplies throughout That's the right, site? That's right, yes. And then it's transformed down further to, uh, to whatever the supply voltage is needed. OK. So here at JET, at the very beginning of the pulse, we need about a gigawatt of power. That's a lot of power. It is a lot. So uh, the national grid I'm very happy about that. So they only allow us to use 575 megawatts. So that's only about a half. Yeah, so in order to get around this, we have to store a lot of energy on site. Right, so how do you store energy? On batteries or something? No, no. Um, we use these two very large flywheel generators. So we store, store all the energy, and the, which we can release very quickly at the beginning of the pulse. Great. Yeah, so um, actually, we're just here. So do you want to come in and take a look? So where's this flywheel then? Well, we're standing right on top of it. Well, it's under the floor. That's right, yes. So uh, what we've got here is we've got 700 tonnes of circular disc spinning around really fast at about 200 RPM. That's why we're vibrating so much. That's right, yes. Yeah. So what's, what's driving that? Well, what, this is what's driving it here, what we're looking at. This right. is a, a very large electric motor. Yeah. And so it's similar to when I was pedaling the bicycle. Yeah. And, uh, and it accelerates up our flywheel to those speeds. So it's as if the bike is lying on its side yes. and the cluster's sticking up here and when you're pedalling you'd be supplying power to that which makes the wheel go round. That's right. So 
It's, it's like uh, if we didn't have the alternator on at the start, yeah. and then this accelerates it up, and so I'm pedaling really fast, yeah. and then we're getting lots of speed in our generator, in our generator. Yeah. and then what we can do is we put the alternator on, which is similar to what we do here, right. and then we extract lots of energy, and right. then it decelerates very quickly, but it gives us about 200, 300 megawatts of power, which is what we need during the pulse. So we can actually go down and take a bit, bit of a closer look down in the pit. So okay. if you follow me. Yeah. Okay, right, so we're actually now down in the generator pit. So right. we're privileged to be right on top of the generator. So this whole thing would be moving? That's right, yeah. So, um, so this moves at about 200, 225 RPM. Wow. Uh, so very fast and... Uh, That's and a huge amount of energy yeah. in this thing. So how do you extract that energy? So what we do is we power up these coils. So we have 48 of these coils. And so they normally they don't do anything until you power them up and then they turn into magnets. Right. And so then what happens is because of the red coils, which is called the stator, and then what we do is we induce current into that, which is what our, our alternating current which we then need to uh, rectify or, yep. or change into a, a direct current, so yep. a standard. That's what's needed in jet, is That's it? That's right. So then we do that, and then that powers our magnets for our plasmas. So in terms of pure energy, we've got about three gigajoules of energy in, in this machine. That's amazing. Yeah, and so we've got two of them. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the power from the generator go straight through towards our uh, torus, which is actually in this building. Is that, are they the cables? Yeah, well, yeah, they are some of the cables that we use, and yep. we have some others out which we can't see here, mm -hmm. um, which are even bigger, and so that's where all our power goes for these big cables. Okay, so will, will we need flywheels for ITER? Um, actually, no, we won't, because they have a slightly different technology. Whereas, right. whereas we use copper magnets, yep. um, which uh, heat up, Right. Uh, a lot, so we can only pulse very short times. So what we need to do is get the energy up very quickly, and then have it for a short time, and then get it away quickly. Right. So that we don't melt our coils. Uh -huh. Whereas in ITER, they'll have superconducting coils. Yeah. So uh, in that case, they haven't got any resistance at all, so they don't lose energy through heat. Right. So that means they don't have to ramp it up so quickly, and they can keep them on all Sounds the time. Sounds like a great system. So it's much better. So it means yeah. that they don't they don't they don't need. Uh, quite so near as much power as do it in a short amount of time so right. they don't need to store it locally. Okay. So yeah. Thanks for your time today. That's my pleasure.